or oh wait 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 a minute does it mean uh, what the hell no one told me my friend hits me up while we're playing and he's like oh man these new cards came out i'm like what are you talking about oh my god let us go one by one into each of these cards. It looks like there's a hefty amount of here, so I'm just gonna start from this first card. Like, comment, subscribe if you like the coverage of Runeterra, TFT, League of Legends, Project L, and all the good stuff. So let's go into it. So first up is going to be a two cause Piltover card. Deal one to an enemy or the enemy nexus and one to another. That is the weirdest looking Piltover card I've ever seen. <laughs> like, like, I'm thinking about like, oh, this is a PNZ card. Like, I, I would, I thought this was like a Shadow Isles or like a Freljord card. Um, but interesting. So it doesn't, there's no discard or anything like that. Just a two cost slow spell. Deal one to an enemy, or the enemy nexus, and one to another. Can I just double hit the nexus for two? I don't know. Card seems uh, pretty ass. Um, outside of what, like Seraphine can double it, and it's like yeah, two. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, not exactly excited for that. Can I? How do I go to the next one? Okay, I can't. At least I just don't know how to. Next up, Noxus Crimson Banker with Hall. Allies cost one less. All right, game's over. <laughs> I don't even want to read the rest of it, but hopefully it uh, does that. When you play an ally, deal two to it. Cool. Also, still terrible. So allies cost one less, but when you play an ally, and any ally, it doesn't. It could even be a champion. You deal two to it every time. Uh, I like that uh, specifically because I feel like Swain is going to use this a lot, right? Swain can benefit off of this just because every time you play a minion, it, it get hits by two. But it also makes all your units more removable. And yes, if you're, oh my god, Scar Grounds, but not really. Because if you're trying to make a wide board, you're going to have some trouble, you know, making a wide board. But if you're trying to just play this and just spam minions, as long as they have at least two health and they're willing to attack, 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 that's good, and then of course this does well with the the scar units, right? I actually think this card's pretty good. This card's, uh, I think, we'll definitely see some play, uh, especially because guess what, guys? Eternal rank. I said in another video, eternal rank is coming, baby. So there's gonna be a lot of strategy you could do with this, but like, especially like I said, the first thing I'm thinking, even though it says crimson, my first thing is uh, Swain. The Swain's the first character that I think about with this, just because every character just hit gets hit by two, every single one, and he needs twelve. So after you play six minions, after this thing, it's boom, leveled up leveled up city but i feel like there should be like and you can even utilize some of the other cards the other crimson cards right and like replay maybe maybe the, maybe there's a uh, swain or like a vladimir ari deck where you keep replaying certain units they get hit uh, uh, effect triggers or something i don't know could be some weird stuff next up is going to be title invocation deal one to a unit spawn one for each damage dealt. It's obviously synergizing with like uh, kegs to some, to some extent. It is a fast speed spell, so the keg could then be hit in response to it. Deal one to a unit so you could target any unit that you want and then it will spawn. Cheap spawn too, I think that's it, that might be the cheapest spawn. There is a two mana, I think spawn two or, or spawn one, so I guess, but this one could be really big. And the fact that it costs two, and could synergize with something else like let's say if you have kegs and like you play this for two get a big enough spawn and then play uh Naga boros i think that this card could be really cool but outside of a spawn deck it's completely useless uh, so it looks like they're really trying to okay i think see it here I'm, I'm i'm just bad okay no i guess i can't oh no that's just for the what it, what it seems like at least with these first two cards they want to play it in specific decks right so I think that that's the whole point of this, like specific decks that are going to be able to utilize this and really knock it out of the park. But they don't seem particularly strong on their own, though. They need their, their certain archetypes that are playing into it. Next one, Adis. Nexus Strike, summon a random husk. God damn. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How does Evelyn read? Evelyn, I think you could put any card that puts a husk. So I'm assuming, I mean, that looks cool. That's a really cool picture. Hush, we're nearly there. You said you wanted to meet my friend, and you trust me, she's going to love you. Uh, and then you see the reflect. That reflection is sick. Like that's actually what she looks like. She's a she's one of the demons. So this one's really cool though. So you could attack next to strike, it, right? Uh, she's gonna next to strike, pop the husk, and then summon another unit. After that, there hasn't been 
a constantly generating hus generator, a, a, a generating husk generator. Uh, there hasn't been a hus generator outside of Evelyn, right? That constantly puts one on the field. So this one's pretty cool. You can attack, then put something with the husk and then utilize it like that. Uh, it is in Ionia though, which is a little bit spooby, right? You think a, you, a little spooby if you're thinking about it, just for the simple fact, right? That when you're playing in Ionia, uh, maybe it's uh, in a plunder-esque deck, right? You attack it, trigger plunder, the next unit comes up with improved stats, stuff like that. But outside, I think in a Evelyn deck, 100% uh, you throw this in there. Like, as long as it's, you're allowed to run it, I'm pretty sure you are. But yeah, no, this card's busted. Uh, I, I love this card a lot, and I love the art of it as well. Next up, we have Valley of Imitation. That is not, that's not chip, that's potato, <laughs> potato chip. Uh, when you play a follower, transform me into an exact copy of it this round. I retain granted buffs. When you play a follower, play a tr transform me into exact copy of it this round. Now, do you go back after? So you play this for three or at the end of a turn, right? And the next thing you, next follower you play, it transforms into exact copy of it. I retain granted buffs. This thing is absolutely it's content creator busted at, at first because obviously you're going to try to put this on with something right and it will transform into that and then like since it's transforming it you know depending on what it is now what i'm curious about is that the can you duplicate bushes right when you play a bush from the hand does it copy the bush and then the thing i, I I'm, I'm sure that doesn't work but just for uh, full sake, right? This really works with the transform decks, right? Because you could do the transform, you play a follower, this thing transforms, the, the chameleon transforms, and that's pretty interesting. But it, you, you obviously have a follower that has something good about it, and I retain granted buffs, right? Which is kind of, I don't know, it just feels dumb to say because it's an exact copy, so it's like, of course you're gonna retain granted buffs. So, I, for what I can also think is that it does hit this round, so I'm assuming it goes back. It is a landmark that transforms into something and then goes back to being a landmark. Um, that is still interesting, and then they, they've been pushing the envelope with the sump work uh, monument and things like that. So this is interesting. If it, it just transforms for the round and then it comes back, or oh wait, 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 wait. wait. Wait a minute, does it mean that if I play something, let's say, and it got plus one, plus one, and then I transform, it, next round it turns back to be a landmark, then the next round I transform to something, it still retains, wait, 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 wait. That would be nuts. That would make this one of the coolest cards in, in one of the coolest cards in Runeterra. There are certain cards in Runeterra that are just like so freaking dope, and that would be insane. So let's say, and it says buffs, so I don't know if that means keywords specifically, but if you buffed it a keyword, then it should keep it, right? So let's say you gave it uh, overcharge or supercharge from Kaiser's uh, champion spell, right? You put that on a unit. No, it has to be from the hand because it's, it's what you play from the hand. So let's just say, I guess you play, let's say you, uh, you play an evolve unit, right? It's evolve and it's the spell shooter unit, right? So it, ah, oh, but it's a buff, hand buff. So. I, there's, there's two different ways I'd have to see it, right? I'd have to see if it copies, uh, it could be really good in a Husk deck, right? If, if, cause when you play a unit, it gets all those buffs, right? And then it should imitate it, depending on I think left or right, right? And then maybe the whatever it captures, it keeps it. That would make this landmark really insane because also it's a landmark that turns into a unit. Now I'm assuming if the unit dies while it's a unit form, it then, it, then the, you lose your landmark. This card is actually very interesting and has to be tested. It's probably the first thing I have to test is does it work with Hust, like something that comes in and gets a buff, it, you, it should do that? Or is it something that you have to buff in the hand like Voidgate or like, you know, um, um, Hida kind of uh, play? Very interesting. As you can see, only card that I talked in length about is the only one I think that that's actually pretty cool. Next up, we got a bird. I see it, bird Crystalline Storm Raptor. Play, deal two to all other units except itself. That thing is five man, uh, five cost three two is garbage can stats. You definitely want to play that card. What is it? Uh, is it Temple or is it uh, Stay United? I think it's uh, Temple of Unite Unity or whatever. Like, so it could be a five cost five five deal two to all other units. It seems way better. Five cost three two, garbage. You definitely have to run some buff. This card in general, I don't know, just seems a little thing. It does. It is a skill. Gene. 
Sorry, you know, I always think if I see a skill, but uh, I don't think a Jin deck would want to run this because all his other minions are usually pretty weak. So, yeah, no, pretty garbage card in my opinion. Next up, Proliferating Dark Wraith. Last Breath, create, it's a one cost one one, which is great. Create in deck an exact copy of your strongest Proliferating Dark Wraith in deck, then double the stats of Proliferating Dark Wraith in deck. Not on the field and not like coming from the grave. So, this is a card where you're gonna want to um, like constantly, obviously constantly kill it, right? Uh, make ephemeral copies of it, soul cleave it. But the issue that I see with this card already, this is a pretty cool art. Uh, the Mist has taught me many things. Most importantly, it taught me uh, uh, <laughs> me to know when to run. Extali Sentinel. Uh, it looks like, yeah, the things, uh, the, it's like create in deck, right? An exact copy of your strongest one, then double the stats. So, of your strongest copy in deck. Create in deck the strongest copy. So, it's as they get, so this thing keeps making itself over and over and over again. And if you were to Soul Cleave or whatever that other guy that kills and then makes a copy of it, this is a like a, uh, what, like, this is a full on deck concept. It's a content creator card. Uh, where you're basically trying to kill this thing as many uh, as many times as possible so that when you play it, it's a one cause big dude. And yeah, the, this would actually go well with the imitation thing, right? Because it would imitate that one cause unit because you could play it straight from the hand and it could be insanely strong, right? Uh, but it's also double the stats of the in deck. So it's it, you have to keep drawing into it. It's a little bit different than some of the other ones where it's like, like Miss Wraith, like you play it and then all the other ones get boosted. This one, you have to keep playing it, they keep dying and then you keep playing them over and over and over again. I don't know if there's a way to tutor it. If you could tutor it, it would be a little bit better. But this one seems interesting. Interesting if you can get it going. Just like I think the Ruin Alkalite, uh, Acolyte, whatever, people are like, ah, it's not that great. But you saw that it kept drawing stuff. But how do you keep drawing this unit? It is a one drop, right? So it could benefit off the Siren songs and all sort of stuff. So you can run it as a one cost unit deck it's in shadow owls I, but like they have a lot of ways to kill and then make another unit of it so it, it there's a possibility but like i said you have to keep drawing so it goes one into two into four and then i think at that point it's already good it's it's made it's it's made itself worth if you can get it to be a one cost four drop that plays out and then possibly you're giving it other keywords by either through equipment or something of that nature. It can basically do all that by itself, but you have to keep drawing them. So you probably need a strong ass draw engine to get this card going. Next up is gonna be Cosmic Call. Uh, two cost burst, invoke a celestial that costs seven or more or pay eight, which is cool. It has two different functions uh, to also reduce the cost of your celestials everywhere by half, round it up. So it has a nice, I just want to use it early just to have a card in my hand, or you could just pay it as eight and then do that. Now, I think these cards have been proven that even if it has a uh, play as this, and I've noticed from the Darken, right? Because the Darken will be like, play uh, Zulani for seven. But with, with uh, Aatrox, leveled up Aatrox out, it, it reminds us it by four, so it actually goes down to two. So I was just curious if you could uh, reduce this to make it come out a little bit earlier would be pretty good but uh i mean it's cool it's uh, interesting to try it as a celestial uh win con kind of deck and then once you half it once you probably just want to use it to just invoke big cards you play two and then you can play something that's cost normally cost eight for four and that seems like a good thing right it seems like a good overall good card to just add um and then we have it twice because you know reasons then we have it three times. Oh, they split it. So this is the invoke one, and then this is the, the event, so they split it. Next up is going to be Mr. Thrift. When one or more of your Traps of Moon activate, plant two of it in that player's deck. At first, I was like, what is this, co-op? Uh, but yeah, so Traps are Boon. So whenever a Chime pops off, you get two Chimes back in your deck. And whenever a Shroom or um, Flash Bomb Trap pops off, they get two of that into their deck. Uh, which is interesting, because uh, putting in the deck, that means uh, for like, at least for the Flash Bombs, which are the one of the, some of the only ones that like are, are specifically on the top of the deck, because now they can basically come in any place of the deck. But it basically ramps. I think it's a little too crappy though, um, because you need it to, it's a one cost, you need it to, to, you need it to pop, right? Has to trigger, and then once it triggers, then you get it, um, then it, then you get that two more back in the deck. Uh, but obviously it could, 
it can ramp if a bunch of them stay on the field. Another one cost as well, which is like, I wonder if this was like a thing with Siren Songs to where like, there was supposed to be a, a bunch of one cost to come afterwards that would, would want to make it pretty good, but it got a little bit out of control, but because you have this thing one one, and I think another one is, I don't know, just one and one, and there it is. Nah, interesting card. I think it's a, it's a good thing. Oh yeah, boons are also a portal, so putting portals back into the deck is pretty good too. Last but not least is Balan the Benevolent. We got a Damasia card. What, have I been saying where these things? This is Banal City Shadow. I feel like I've been saying it for a little bit, but not probably like all of them. But you know, you guys, forgive me. Four cost, zero four, formidable. Grant formidable allies everywhere. Plus zero, plus one. Uh, I guess if you're playing formidable, you're in that. You're in the building, right? Uh, <laughs> Now, where I like this uh, more specifically is maybe like a, because uh, Kaiza and Demacia are still, I think, was still the best. So giving her formidable and then she gets more uh, thing as its thing keeps attacking. And then it makes it stuff, gives itself plus one, right, defense. And then if you keep doing that, but th there's not enough formidable. So I would say that this card is uh, pretty, pretty cheeks at the end of the day. But interesting if you have a formidable deck, which I think has died out, especially with all the pings. Because any formidable unit getting pinged even slightly just reduces how strong it is by like a lot. It just gets gradually weaker so fast, it's insane. Oh no! I did not know that there were also buffs and nerfs. We'll go over this really quickly. Uh, when allowing for two plus two plus four attacks in a single row, the championship was too strong. Oh yeah, okay. So, oh okay, so yeah, they're just removing the scout aspect of it. Um, but. You can't use it. You can still attack with it, right? You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's how it was before. So you pretty much would use scout attack and then attack again, which was really difficult to do with it. So if you use it and you haven't attacked yet, then you just wasted a rally. So you, you have to do it within the same thing. Uh, and also, they made it one mana cheaper, though. It used to be nine, but now it's down to eight. But interesting. Nice little cool way to change that up. Stop Monument. Uh, instead of three, uh, it's a four cost and it plants five. And Metality Pro can cause a momental shift in the meta where making it slower and more lethal to make it uh, more difficult for the Sump to steal games. And honestly, the thing that it, they could have did is that, but it could benefit the player. I was thinking like maybe if they made it like draw one or if they made it, they have a countdown, right? They could have kept it that and then they could have made that a countdown. This one keeps it with the same effect. It makes it, you can play it a little bit later. Though people were playing it later to begin with, so I think most people were waiting until they lost a decent amount of HP and then played it. But you, I think it was an argument that you could play it earlier, keep your HP high, and then it was basically the same thing. But planting more into the deck is pretty uh, interesting though, but we'll see if that changed anything. Condense going up to three costs, ayyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyy
Rancho uh, Return on Wrench grants impact now it does not but it has uh, gives you at least one defense when it's swapping around I didn't think that this card was that great but I do I did watch a video and it was like oh you know it's easy discard fodder right you can discard it uh, when the unit dies it goes back to the hand and then you can discard it again uh, I'm assuming if you discard it and you don't have an ally on the field, uh, you just get screwed. But as long as you have an ally on the field, you have an infinite discard target, which is pretty cool. So the impact of it was irrelevant, uh, in my opinion. But, it, you know, impact is what damage could trigger plunder. So I guess that nerfs this card bad. I don't know. Uh, Shelly, uh, they take the tune off of it so he doesn't get that free uh, mana to help you ramp him up. They want you to play him as a 5-3-3 and then hopefully work it out. So, yeah. Uh, next up, Warlord's Palace. Oh, no! Warlord's Palace getting hit. Uh, no, getting buffed. Uh, instead of 9 costs, uh, now Countdown is going down to 10. Uh, so they said, yo, we want to see that auction. And I think, yeah, that Momentous Choice change is different too, which uh, accelerated it by a lot too. So, interesting. Okay. And then Warlord's Horde also going down, uh, making it easier. Poro King? Where's, where's Poro King coming up? So level up, you've summoned 6 other new Poros, right? New... You summon six plus new poros when I level up created special snacks in hand. Oh No I've been specifically I specifically as a uh, uh, Self-proclaimed poro king master. Uh, I would save a poro so that you could level up the poro king and then get a special snack in the same turn Now I could basically do both right so you play uh, let's say poro kings on the field You play a poro you get the regular poro snacks. He levels up now He's gonna get a special poro snacks and then you should be, and then it level up resets, and then you can get another one. So that's three snacks right then and there, which is insane. Um, that's gonna make him super good. Oh, they're also buffing or nerfing some of the snacks. Let's see, Grand Plus One Plus One, Frostbite, and oh no, no, no. Okay, Poor King is giga busted. Jesus Lord, that's a huge change. That is a huge change. Hopefully, they changed the other one too. Okay, they did not. Uh, this one is uh, this change aims to establish that as more of a threat to help expand the pool. No, you just have to make more ambush cards. That's just what you have to do. But making it two three, I guess. Uh, Bristol Hog, yes, if you have an ally, plus one plus one. The first time an ally transforms, grant me two one. It has more attack. Who cares? All right, Riven. Uh, let's see. Each round, the first time you increase my power, increase it by twice the amount. Each round, the first time you increase my power, grant me that much power. Huh? Small quality of life buff to make room more satisfying and synergistic with effects like equipment. I guess. Cool. Anyway, uh, <laughs> level up, you gained 7 plus mana. Instead, it's you played 6 spells with an allied Nami. Oh, what a gut! Oh my god, jeez. Oh, wait, 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 sorry. No, that's actually just different. So, they're taking out the whole spell mana mechanic in, out completely. Now it's about playing a bunch of spells while she's on on the field. That is interesting, right? Because um, every other ones are just like, oh, once you play six spells, you just level it up, even if the character's not there. Now you have to play Nami, right? And then you have to spam spells, basically. Uh, interesting, very interesting. I thought it was a gut. It's not a gut. It does require you to keep her alive longer. And they already nerfed her her uh, leveled up version a long time ago. Unless they're changing, okay, I'm about to say, because they changed it that you didn't get health anymore. So it made it like really, really hard to do. Uh, and they came in on us. So now when you play a spell, ramp plus one to the, to the weakest ally. So now you get health again. So that's going to be interesting to see if Nami becomes over like too crazy or is it too easy to level her up. Six spells with Nami, I think, is definitely doable. And it also makes me think about Nami uh, Samira, right? Because uh, you could just spam spells now. It's not about saving spell mana, she just has to be on the field. You're playing flares, you play like little small cards that are reduced by plunder. Uh, I think that uh, Nami Samara is going to be huge. And then we have the Sun Guardian going to a 2 3. That's just a straight up buff. Uh, Dragon Lookout becoming a 5 5. That makes sense. The card barely sees play anyway. Thread the Needle going down to 2 costs. Doesn't see play at all, but it does help that it's a little bit cheaper. It might make you want to play it. But yeah, it's. I think it's Gwen's. Oh, yeah, it's Gwen's uh, champion spell as well. So making it a little bit easier to use if in a, in a pinch is good too strafing uh strike heal five if it oh boy that's actually amazing because that also buffs uh leveled up shyvana too that's amazing actually uh shyvana's confront 
Um, Grand Ally Child, if it's a dragon, draw one card. Same thing with the, oh, I don't know why they split this one with this other thing. So that's actually, I, I actually like Confront a lot. I've always liked it, like as a, just a, as a nice card, especially if you want to target, make something a challenger that's normally not, that especially something with Quick Attack or uh, obviously Fury or uh, re Regeneration. That's awesome. This is a really cool change. Dawning Shadow is a little bit cheaper. Damn, that's good for Senna, obviously. Uh, this one, deal three to uh, enemy, one to others, deal four, one to others, just a straight up buff. Eradication, a little bit cheaper. And it makes sense because there's a lot of times where the card actually is completely useless by bypassing that thing. So I think making it a little bit cheaper will make it, people try it out a little bit more. Maybe trying to close out earlier games, right? Because then on turn three, when they're playing all their little hus stuff, because they mastermind the mana, you just back them with eradication, kill all the hus plus anything else that has low attack, and boom. But Husk, I don't know how popular it is, but a lot of times you're getting beat by little weenies, so now you can eradicate it. And then we have adjustments, level up, enemy struck 12. You've attacked with 16 plus power of allied ally, of equipped ally, sorry. That is completely different, right? That means that you don't even, ah! That could, that could screw him. Now, cause you have to attack with it, right? But before, um, like let's say you use fish fight, right? You'd fish fight and that was a strike and then that would count towards, but now you have to attack? That might end it to even more, as, well, 16 plus power, yeah, right? So I think the issue also was that it, it, what they're trying to circumvent was being like frozen or something like that, but I don't know, that might be really hard because like if you can't attack with the units, like you can strike with them to defend, but if you can't attack with it, it seems like that might be a lot. I think that that, that hurts Jax like by a lot. Realm uh, Caretaker, they changed it from a Yurtle to a Fey. What the hell? That's actually really interesting for them to change the subtype of a thing. Uh, uh, that, that, um, that's interesting for them to do that. There's a lot of indications where that could, it could, it's affected by the other thing that the gleaming lantern and stuff like that, but interesting for them to change a subtype. Uh, same thing with the portal scholar is now not a yodel, but it's a fey, uh, making it, it could become cheaper. There's a lot of stuff. Okay. Buffs. They're calling these eternal buffs, but like, okay, Lee Sin's easier, 10 to eight. Withering Mist is now four. Cost, this one goes back to being a three, two. Anivia has zero, two. So what this shows me also, this is very weird. Wow, it's a, now it's a three, one, so it can trade a little bit better. It's weird that they're separating the, the patches. Uh, sorry, the yeah, the patch, this is eternal. Cause I would have thought that they would be rotating uh, champions in and out of it, right? Like it, I, it, they're making it seem as like, the eternal stuff will always be eternal, right? This is six claws, cool. Uh, this is a five four, cool. Scattering pod does not have a tune anymore, but it's a five cost. You can use it a little bit earlier, cool. And this is back what I was saying with the crimson thing, right? That crimson thing, I think crimson Iona might be pretty cool. Now you can play this on like turn four, right? Like start ramping up with some crazy stuff. This is a three four. I feel like I, uh, fearsome. It never had fearsome. Now it has fearsome. Okay, that's interesting. Very interesting. Uh, Swift Lancer, cool, cool. Just, just these are just the stat buffs. I feel like these are mostly irrelevant. I think changing either the cost or the effect is more important to look at. And that is the one, two, cool. Guardian of the Peak is a seven, seven instead of a six, six, cool. Yeah, these are just straight stat, the two cost wish, nice. One cost landmark, I feel like this is a rel uh, very relevant uh, for certain decks, uh, especially with that Celestial stuff that we were looking at uh, earlier. Ryan Fame Wolf was a 3 3, 3 cost 3 3. Awesome. Avalanche Outriders, a little bit stronger. This one's harder to take out. That's interesting. Molten Breath. Uh, Ally I actually really like this card because uh, you strike two enemies for the price of one card. Sounds nuts. And that's a little bit cheaper, so maybe I could try it out. Broodmother 7 7. This thing now has a tune. Great. Insightful Investigator 3 4. An uh, engine card that's a little bit harder to take out. I like it. Raiding Guardian is now at 5 5. Nice. This one is burst speed now. Yeah, and that, that's actually big. Well, Ritual Renewal, they say it's, a, and again, this is weird. Why is this a turtle nerf? Because uh, the Telstones, I'm pretty sure, are all uh, legal in, um, pretty sure they're all legal in Standard. So now this is a great buff for Standard as well. Because now you can Ionian Telstones into this. That's five cost heal, heal your Nexus four, heal ally, uh, and draw one. That's insane. Adjustments. Oh, okay. Even more stuff, I guess. Uh, deal one to each one on my right to the next and the next is now it's play deal one to any number of allies To deal that much to an enemy That's definitely different 
So he doesn't have the attack thing at all. So that thing is just gone. So it kind of synergizes with the banquet, right? You need a big field and then you could deal to any number of enemies. So you play him, you select as many enemies you want. So you select two enemies, you're gonna be able to do two damage to an enemy, right? That's how he, that's how that card reads. So it has nothing to do with attacking. It allows him to kind of sit back because his other one is weird, right? Like his first one, it was kind of hard to get him out. I think they should have just made him cheaper, right? But now with the banquet, you can play him on four, right? And if other cards before him were attacked and then he did his other effect, Vlad's most likely leveled and pretty much out at turn four and he re he's regenerating, right? Then we have this one. So they changed his uh, level two, right? So the new one is, I'm just gonna read the new card, right? Uh, so he still has the play effect, right? For each attacking ally on my right, deal one to it and drain. Okay, that's still the same. So what did he change? Are they just changing that the level two now has the same play effect? Plus the attack effect. Um, for each attacking ally on my right, yep. Analyze that much to the enemy. Deal one to, wait, Crimson Pact is, yeah, that's the spell. Deal one to each ally on my right. Uh, it said deal one to any number of allies to deal that much, okay, they must, uh, oh, oh, I don't know, this looks weird. Or maybe they just changed it that deal one to a number of enemies that, or maybe this is like, they're trying to say that it happens instantaneously. Cause a lot of times they like, you can kill the character on the right. Maybe they mean like now it doesn't matter. Like whatever number is calculated at that exact moment. Uh, I guess, I don't know. Competitive, don't care. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. Path to champion, Stardust stuff. Cool, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I don't care. Uh, the following champions will be available to obtain as supports. This Path to Champion stuff, I just, yeah, I just play Path to Champions for fun. Anywho, that's, now it's, now it's, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, I didn't know that they also had patch notes as well. So those are interesting. Some of them are like not as much because it's just stat changes, like stuff that, just, that doesn't really matter. I, like I said, cost and effect are the two most important things. If it's not that, I just don't care. It's just, I, I can't even fathom or raise my eyebrow to be like, oh my God. So anywho, that's gonna be it for me. And now I am officially out. Like, comment, subscribe for all things Rune Terra, TFT, League of Legends, Project L, and I'm probably forgetting something and I feel bad. And yes, peace.